The following program includes strong language. Now on Radio 2, a new drama from legendary playwright Tom Stoppard to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Pink Floyd's The Dark Side of the Moon. The album topped the charts on its release in 1973 and it remained in the charts for 741 weeks from 1973 to 1988. With an estimated 50 million copies sold, it's the band's most commercially successful work and it's frequently ranked as one of the greatest albums of all time. Tom Stoppard was first approached with the suggestion of writing a play based on the album by a friend in 1973. Now, 40 years later, he's created a fantastical story about fear, philosophy and madness, woven together with the original music. Dark Side by Tom Stoppard, a play for radio incorporating The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. must have failed. It's speeding toward where the bridge got washed away in the flood. It's certain death for those people on that train. It's going in the river and there's someone... Let me through. I'm a moral philosopher. Why? It's Ethics Man. Ethics Man? What's he going to... Look! He switched the points! Just in time. Nice work, Ethics Man. He diverted the train onto the other track. You saved their lives, Ethics Man. I did what had to be done. Wait, there's some kids standing on the other track. You're right, and he hasn't seen the train coming. The train went right over him. Didn't you see him there, ethics man? I saw him, son. Someday you'll understand. Hands up who thinks Ethics Man did the right thing. Hands up who thinks Ethics Man did the wrong thing. Hands up who didn't put their hand up. Miss McCoy? Who was on the train? We don't know who was on the train. Ethics Man did what had to be done. Who wants to tell me Ethics Man's moral philosophy? Yes, Miss McCoy. Who was the boy who got hit by the train? There's no boy. It's a thought experiment. We imagine a problem. By switching the points and sacrificing one person's life, we can save many lives. Is it a moral action? Ethics man says yes. Ethics man is a utilitarian. He says an action is a moral action only if the consequences are good. He says the consequences are good if they increase the sum of human happiness. We define happiness as a state of well-being, starting off with being alive instead of dead. Choose your own ground 
He did what had to be done, the dickhead. I'm sorry you're dead. It's okay. It didn't hurt. It was a no-brainer for ethics, man. Just you against a trainload of people. Wham. Yeah. Wham. What does he know about consequences? You could have been the one who stops the glaciers melting or had kids who won Olympic gold if we're talking about happiness. Yeah, I could have. I could have stopped the glaciers melting and whatever, probably. And how about them on the train? Who's to say he didn't save a serial killer? Or a mad bomber on a date with destiny? Or just people who fuck you up normally? Geography teachers, ticket inspectors, boyfriends who shag your best friend, people who write the small print, see over for penalties, people who go, I'm telling you for your own good, and can't you read? We're closed. All of them saved to fuck you up another day. Thanks very much, ethics man. I hope you're happy now. Did he have a cape? I don't know. Most likely a pullover like your wife gives you for Christmas. Oh. I'm Emily, by the way. Hi. Do you go to school? I'm at college. Well, I'm doing a course. I mean, while I'm waiting to see what I want to do. I'm learning about philosophy. Heavy or what. Like, what is the good? And moral actions, the just society, Plato, Rousseau, Immanuel Kant. We've learned all of them. No, that's the website. Great thinkers. What's your name? I didn't have a name. I was a thought experiment. Except I felt my heart beating. I had a heartbeat. I thought, hey, here we go. I heard something coming. <laughs> like helicopter blades. But knowledge was in me. I knew stuff. I got to be a person. Then you got hit by a train. Yeah. I wish I'd had longer, though. I'd have done a few things with my life, thought a few things too, knowing what I know now. I can teach you philosophy. In my opinion, Immanuel Kant would have let the train go in the river. Wow. I'll tell Mr. Baggett. Being a person is respect, because you're not a cat or a dog or a bunch of tulips. You're a human person, and humanness is not like something there can be different amounts of. It's maxed out from the start. Total respect every time. Kill one, kill a train man. You're dissing the transcendental is all. Hey, that's amazing. What's a transcendental? It's the juggler on the radio. The juggler on the radio? If there's a juggler on the radio, he sounds exactly the same as if there's no juggler. There's lots of people listening to the radio, and some are saying, I believe in the juggler. And some are saying, there is no juggler. And there's a few philosopher-type people saying, how is a juggler you can't see, hear, smell, or touch different from no juggler? But there's nothing any of these people can tell each other about the existence or the non-existence of the juggler. So, how do you know there's a juggler? I heard him on the radio. There's a juggler, then? I hear voices no one can hear. Talking and laughing about being mad, about dying, things like that. Dr. Angibus tried to shut them up with his Smarties and licorice torpedoes. I'm rattling with them, but they're still there, the voices. Who's Dr. Angibus? He's Dr. Angibus, that's who. And now he's thinking to burn them with his laser gun, but he's got it pointed the wrong way, in my opinion. Yeah, the sky is full of noises. Can you hear them too? Anybody can hear them. It's just tuning your mind to pick up the waveforms. Words and sounds and thoughts are each other in different tuning. Come on. I have a bad feeling someone's looking for us. Well, where are we going? To seek out the wise one. The wise one? Who's that? They say he knows the secret of life. Okay, that sounds good. 
Is it far? I think I've got the wrong shoes on. Get down! Get down! Oh my god! What's happening? Plane, it's Ubermensch. A parachute coming down here. He's going to land right by us. Come on, let's go and see who it is. Miss McCoy, should be a quick release on this harness. There we are, Mr. Baggett. Nothing to worry about. But the plane. The explosion, the pilot, who was on the plane? There's no plane, no pilot. It's a thought experiment. I'm wondering what you're doing here. That's just what I was wondering about you. He's got the pullover. Hello. I know you from somewhere. Don't tell me. Runaway train. Mr. Baggett, are you ethics man? I hope you can keep a secret. This is a thought experiment. Yes, we imagine a problem. We know which... what a thought experiment is. I was a utilitarian consequentialist, but I've been forced to re-examine some deeply held convictions. We imagine, let us say, three passengers on a private aeroplane. The pilot has had a heart attack and has died at the controls. There is only one parachute. The passengers are a politician, a banker, and a moral philosopher. Have you guessed? Of course you have. Ethics man did what had to be done. <laughs> like to tell me ethics man's new philosophy there's miss McCoy not with us today ethics man is a Nietzschean egoist Friedrich Nietzsche 1844 to 1900 Nietzsche looked around him and announced that God was dead the question follows if God is dead who is making the rules nobody Nietzsche said, or rather, anybody. The rules are made by whoever has the will to make them. He who has the will gets the parachute. Slave or Superman is the only choice. There is no other morality. Nietzsche died mad. I will write his name on the board. Us. Hang on, that doesn't look right. I think I've got the Z in the wrong. Nope, I know what it is. There should be a T in it. That's better. Nope, still looks wrong. Ooh. Where's the eraser? Who moved the eraser? By God, if I find out who... I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and bloody tired. Every time I need the eraser, I will not live like this! Are we nearly there yet? We have to get above the clouds. Why does the wise one live on top of a mountain? Is he a cartoon? I think I saw a patch of sky. Are you sure he's going to tell me the secret of life? He tells the secret of life to anyone who is prepared to make the journey. There he is. Wow. Old. Naked. Is that wise? <clears throat> this is my friend Emily. She has made the long journey to meet you. Hi. Welcome. So, you want to know the secret of life? That's what I've come to hear. Come closer then. The 
secret of life is. This is not a drill. It was a little disappointing, I thought. It's a long way to come to be told the secret of life's what your mother's been shouting up the stairs at you. Wake up, Emily, your life is going by. <laughs> what do you see when you see yourself doing what you want to do? I see some kind of big venue full of people come to hear me talk. But they know the world is fucked if something isn't done. They know what has to be done. They don't understand why nobody's really doing it. The system is locked somehow, they don't know why, and they're looking up at me. Can Emily McCoy save the world? I, I explain it to them as if I'm talking to children. When I'm done, I say, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention, and I walk off. They sit there stunned, but next day, fucked upness is on the turn, like flood water starting to go down. Glaciers, rainforests, pollution. What do you say to them? That's the part I'm still working on. We need to get off the mountain before night. I'm studying for my big moment. Sun's almost gone. I can see small fires in the valley. I'm doing great thinkers, but they're not great at thinking the same thing. 
did we start off good and couldn't keep it up? Or start off bad and this is as far as we've got learning to be good? I heard a bell dinging. There must be people. Soldiers. Look. They've got guns. Holy moly. What happened here? The whole floor of the valley looks like a disaster came through. Yeah. Like a boneyard or something. There's something moving over there. Past the firelight. Dogs. Feeding on something dead. Dead cow. Dogs and crows. Someone coming. I see him. A fat man. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. God, oh, he's fat. It's the pictures that got small. Hello there. Do you care for the flickers? The flickers? Where is everybody? There's a gathering. Didn't you hear the bell? We just got here. Overloaded life raft or sacrificed for organ transplants? Runaway train. I was the one on the other track. Bad luck. A leaky hot air balloon did for me. Someone had to go over the side. Fattest first. Saved the lives of three thin balloonists. Bastards. You mean everyone here was a thought experiment? That's funny. There is a plain dust in crops where there ain't no crops. There ain't no anything. Not a blade of grass. Why is nothing growing? It's a tragedy. The whole valley was common land. First-class grazing and plenty for everyone, share and share alike. With a stream running down the middle to dip a bucket in, and enough water behind the dam to turn a wheel in the sluice. You could slip an extra cow or two into your herd, with no one any the wiser. Or take a little channel off the stream for your tomato patch. I wasn't the first, believe me. You mean, you cheated? I had to. Then look at it my way. Either there's others cheating, or there's nobody cheating. If there's others cheating, I'd be a fool to stick to what was agreed. For all I know, I'd be the only one. So it's best for me to cheat along, that's obvious. And if there's nobody cheating, my little bit of cheating makes no difference, so that's best for me too. Whatever the others are doing, it's best for me to cheat. The tragedy was that everyone else was thinking the same thing. So the common was bound to be overgrazed and the stream was bound to fail. Nothing could have stopped the common from being ruined for us all. Yes, it could. You could have decided not to cheat whatever else the others were doing. Well, it wouldn't have made any difference, me not cheating on my own. You wouldn't be on your own if everyone was thinking the same. In the end, you gain nothing by cheating. So you might as well have played fair. Yes, you cracked it, Emily. Emily? Aren't you nobody? No, I'm not a bloody thought experiment. I'm Emily McCoy. Emily McCoy? Everybody's waiting for you. Me? You're going out a youngster, but you gotta come back a star. I'm not ready. This is not a drill. This is it. I, I need time to think. No. It came in like a bird through a window and out. It's done. But I have to find the words. Hold the thought like holding a breath till you can't hold it anymore. Then hold it more till you think you're going to die. And let it go. A thought wave. Sound waves of pure thought. I am not afraid of dying. Any time will do, I don't mind. And I'm getting voices. Why should I be afraid of dying? There's no reason for it. You've got to go sometime. Thought waves. You can do that. Take a breath. Hold it. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. Go, girl.
so woe to you. Oh, woe to you and me. And woe to all of us. But we can save the earth from turning to dust and bones. Dust and bones. From fire and flood. Here's the thing. Here's what I'm saying. The earth is the common. You can't save it for yourself, but you can save it for others. And the others will save it for you. But the other is us. And we are the other. We are of a kind. We are natural born to kindness, which means to act as to our kind, as kin to kin, as kindred, which is to act kindly. What is the good? It's nothing but a contest of kindness. To be unkind is against nature, and it makes us feel bad. To be selfish is against nature because it is against our kindness. We are as natural born to unselfishness as a mother to her baby. Her milk is the milk of human kin and kindness. But when we live for trickery and gain, we turn against nature. And nature will turn against us. We will be lords of dust and bones. Are you with the witch, boy? What? Are you with the witch? What witch? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. That witch. Who are you? I'm the witch finder. The witch finder? She's not a witch. It was me showed her. You bewitched her. What happened? They heard you. They were bewitched. Dr. Antrobus! He says he's the witch finder. Dr. Antrobus, it's me, Emily. Don't be afraid. I'm here to help you. Shazam! <gasps> so, this is where you've got to. I've all been missing you, Miss McCoy. Oh, Mr. Baggett! How'd you like the cape? Oh, you look silly. Yes, I'm not convinced. I can't fly. I can flounce a little. But I've decided the Superman idea is unsustainable for anyone who's relatively sane. I feel my niche is somewhere between Kantian do as you would have everybody do and Hobbesian do unto others before they do unto you. I don't care about you. What have they done with my friend? Held on suspicion of witchcraft. Oh, he's a prisoner too. It's classic. Two prisoners, they can't confer. They're thinking. If they give evidence against each other, their lives will be spared and they'll go to prison. If they both keep silent, They'll get off on the main charge and get a shorter sentence. But if one keeps silent and the other turns state's evidence, spot the dilemma. Mr. Baggett, you're supposed to be cleverer than me because you're the teacher. But your games and thought experiments are stupid. In proper life, people aren't just out for themselves. And there's always a million things you don't know. Your stick figures they think they can work out the answers like doing Sudoku. And what I'm thinking is, you can't work out what is the good. You just know what is the good. That's what's good about it. You're an intuitionist. If it caught on, it would lead to widespread unemployment among moral philosophers. Are you coming back to finish the course? I don't know. I don't understand what's come over, Dr. Antropus. Who are you? Fat man! This chick is toast. <laughs> Chamberlain, bring up the prisoners. Prisoner A and prisoner B. Which is which? I'm the witch. And which are you? It's me who's the witch, Doctor. No, it's me who's the witch, Doctor. <laughs> no laughter in the public benches. There wasn't any laughter in the public benches, Mr. Witchfinder. As I justly observed. Wake up! By the way, aren't you Mr. Baggett? I am. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Your student confesses to being a witch. One wonders where she gets it from. 
It's a false confession, Mr. Witchfinder. I'm the witch. I've always been a witch, and nobody bewitched me. She's not a witch. I'm the witch. Prisoners A and B are making false confessions to sacrifice themselves, each for the other. I've never come across a case like this in the game of Prisoner's Dilemma. It's competitive altruism. Altruism? Consideration of the other. Selflessness. The good in operation. We know what altruism is, Mr. Baggett which is more than you appear to do. Altruism is a relic of 19th century moral thinking now understood to be its opposite. That is, selfishness in disguise, genetically programmed for long-term benefits. In other words, there is no such thing as altruism. It makes a mockery of prisoners' dilemma studies, and I intend to make an example of whoever's the witch here. I am the witch. I'm 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 the witch. Silence. What was all that, Mr. Baggett? Plagiarism, Mr. Witchfinder. Well, I'm not having it. She howled, she sobbed, she ululated, she uttered not one word of sense, yet the witnesses caught in her enchantment heard her preach in words as plain as I speak to you now. The land is blighted, and it is witchery plain. What did she say about human kind? She say we're natural born to be kindly. As a mother to a child. As a brother to a sister. Silence! Witchery, I said, and the boy is in it up to his neck. Not just witchery, Mr. Witchfinder, but falsehood. Sentimental twaddle. In a state of nature, we're at war, each against all. Nature doesn't teach hippy dippy do goody goodery. We'd still be living in caves without proper roads where you can put your foot down. Nature teaches self interest. A just society with, for example, cufflinks depends on the enlightened self interest of, for example, bankers. And you are? A banker. Was that you on that plane? It was. Thanks to that swine. Baggett? Baggett again. He thought me up too, Mr. Witchfinder. Are you the pilot? No, I'm the politician. The pilot was already dead and had no moral position as regards the parachute. And where do you stand on burning the witch? Ah, well, how does one establish she's a witch? By strapping her to a board and dunking her in a pond till she admits it, the tried and trusted way of witchfinders through the ages. Let me say, first of all, when I say witch, I don't mean to sound in any way witchist. Inclusiveness is sacred to me. Weirdos welcome within the law is how I see it. Are you for burning the witch? On the other hand, constraints are the essence of a just society. Constraints, inclusiveness and accountancy. I mean accountability. And accountancy. And when I say constraints, I mean liberties. And plenty of them. Here, here. Do you two work together? No, nope, not at all. We hardly know each other. We've only met socially. We never talk about anything which might be a conflict of interest. Never. We have none. just joined us, there is a change to the advertised program. The Radio Juggler will now follow our live coverage of the witch burning. And I think, yes, the two witches are being brought out now. I can see some movements just inside the doorway, and the crowd has seen them too. The boy is now visible, held fast by armed soldiers, and behind him, Emily McCoy. It looks like the end, Emily. You shouldn't have tried to save me, but thank you for trying. You shouldn't have either, but thank you too. It was no big thing. I'd already been hit by a train. And here they come, 
hurried along to the place of execution when the laser gun is powered up for the modern witch burning. And the spectators don't like it. They're being held back, some in tears, on their knees. And there's something unexpected happening over there. A crowd of about a hundred people, some women and children among them carrying suitcases and bundles, have appeared from nowhere, surging around the prisoners. This is unbelievable. It looks like a rescue attempt. Run, Emily! Run! This way! Run for the tree line! What happened? Who were those people? They were on the train. What? The train which didn't go in the river. They saved us. Oh, wow. Ethics. Come on. The soldiers are coming after us. We have to get into the trees or we don't stand a chance. Oh, I've lost his shoe. Wait. Don't stop. It's muddy here. I know. I can't run anymore. You go. I'm not leaving you. I'm so sorry, Emily. It was all my fault. Look. The ground is wet. And there's blades of grass. You're right. The ground is just squelching up. And look, there's more grass poking through here. And here. All over the place. Yeah. The valley is turning green. Soldiers have seen it too. They've stopped shooting. What are the people shouting? It's a miracle! The curse is lifted! Praise be the Lord! Praise be his servant, Emily McCall! You did it, Emily. Just like you said, everything's on the turn. This is a total opportunity. Who wants a sound bite? One word, gentlemen. Infrastructure. Green shoots. The green shoots of economic recovery. 100 million at two and a half over ten. Do I hear 105 mil? Over there. 105 over ten at two and a half. It's with you, sir. It's a success for the green belt. And we're going to build on it. Stop! Stop them, fat man! They'll spoil everything! Forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown. Money! All gone. Where's my friend? You have a rest now. Where's my friend? I'll come back to see you. Sleep now. McCoy, how's the witchery business? Hey, fat man. What do you think of the old place now? Didn't recognize it. Only the bell tower. Gardens are pretty, with the waterfall and all. You should have seen the valley in its glory days. Like a picture book painted in by God. Grassland further than you could see. And more cattle than you could count before we ruined it. Always meant to ask you, fat man. 
How did you stay fat when the common was all dust? I was the thought experiment. When you're thought up fat, that's what you are. Love the wig, by the way. Yeah. Got my head shaved. That's the bell for visitors to leave. I've got to go in now. Hasta la vista, baby. The glacier's melting. Can you hear? Where are you, boy? Where are you? Kindness didn't save the world. Still working on that. But if kindness is only selfishness in disguise, like the witch finder said, the question, what is the good, wouldn't be about anything except what's best for you. And what's moral about that? Yeah. You got it, Emily. Hey. Hi. Where did you go? Nowhere. He lost me is all. In the voices. Don't go away again. Even if you didn't. Don't ever. I won't ever. I'll be there with you.
Miss McCoy. Just popped in to see how you're getting on. Mr. Bagger. Hello. Oh, you look bold. In the pink. You're much missed. The flowers are from the class. Oh, thank you. Have the chair. The door has to stay open. It's all the rules here. It won't be for long, I'm sure. But we all hope you'll be coming back to the course. What is the good, eh? Absolutely. What is the good? So how's progress? Oh, we don't make progress. Footnotes to Aristotle, has been said. The good life. Justice and fairness. Mr. Baggett, for weeks before they brought me here, I couldn't get out of bed for crying and thinking, what is the good? What is the good? Till I'm going, what is the good of asking what is the good when the bad is doing just great without anyone asking what is it? Injustice and unfairness are running free like they own the earth. And the way it's looking, the earth won't be worth owning. <sighs> Do you believe in the juggler? Do I believe in the juggler? In the beginning, before there was something, there was nothing. But in the nothingness was everything to come squeezed into a point which burst and was the universe. Do you believe this? Where is the juggler? And the universe was nothing but stuff in empty space. Atoms pinballing into molecules, into stars and... Everything was lifeless. And that was everything there was and ever could be anywhere. Except for this. This one speck in the whole universe where molecules of liquid and gas and Lego were stirred into accidental life. By solar rays or electric storms, maybe. Into bacteria, plankton jellyfish, into guppies using their fins to crawl ashore on the sea rack, into lizards, into a tiny shrew like Mrs. Tiggywinkle whose blood was warm, and onward, upward, on four legs, on two legs, here we come, grunting, learning fire, and cooking and ballroom dancing. And that's it. That's all of it. Do you believe this? When you hear the bell, follow the signs to the main gate. The lunatic is on the grass. The lunatic is on the grass Remembering games and daisy chains and laughs Got to keep the lunas on the path The lunatic is in the hall Cheeks are in my hall. The paper holds their folded faces to the floor. And every day the paper boy brings more. See you on the dark side of the moon. 
Where are you, boy? Hi. Hey. The lunatic is in my head. <laughs> Don't go away again. <laughs> the lunatic is in my head. You raise the blade. You make the change. You rearrange me till I'm sane. You lock the door. Throw away the key. There's someone in my head, but it's not me. The ice is melting. Your drink is getting warm. A wall of water is heading for your patio. From space, you can see the coal furnaces glowing. We consume everything. We're dying of consumption. Hardwoods are toppling for dashboards. The last rhino has given up its horn for a cancer cure that doesn't work. The last fish is gasping beneath a floating island of plastic as big as France. The weather forecast is a state secret. Do you believe in the juggler? When you hear the bell, it's time to go in. Dark Side by Tom Stoppard was a play for radio incorporating the dark side of the moon by Pink Floyd. Emily was played by Amaka Okafor. The boy by Ewan Rayon. Mr. Baggett by Rufus Sewell, Dr. Antrobus by Bill Nye, and The Fat Man by Adrian Scarborough. The Wise One was played by Peter Marinka, The Banker by Robert Blythe, The Politician by Ben Crow, and Emily's Mother by Philippa Stanton. The Director was James Robinson. And Radio 2's Pink Floyd Night continues after the news with another chance to hear the Pink Floyd Record Producers Special with Steve Levine and Richard Allenson. This is BBC Radio 2, online, on digital radio and on 88 to 91 FM.